that's good. Yeah, it is good, and we are live. We are, we are back with another Thursday. I think this is the only fifth time. We did Howard the Duck. We did The Rocketeer. <laughs> we did what? Uh, Black Widow was a Thursday episode. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, only Marvel so far. Yeah, only Marvel. Well, Rocketeer was not Marvel, was it? No, but it's Disney. Yeah. Oh, it's Disney. Okay, yeah. But it, it was an independent oh. comedy. We did Into the Spider-Verse on a Thursday. That's I think that was our first one. The Rocketeer, Howard the Duck, and now uh, Black Widow, and then now The Time Machine. The Time Machine. The 1960. The what? We do more Thursdays. Yeah, we should do more Thursdays. We'll figure that out. We'll try. I mean, I mean, come on. We are trying to do The Time Machine for a while, and there, nothing was working. Yeah, and now now we finally got you it. The Time yeah. Machine. H.G. Wells' The Time Machine. I wonder if somebody wasn't one nice so I want to talk to you about the author first. I don't know too much about it's, oh H.G. Wells. Yeah, H.G. Wells. I don't know too much about him. Yeah, H.G. Wells. He wrote a lot of books. He's the guy who wrote uh, wrote the Time Machine. He also wrote the Invisible Man. Uh, for the worlds. For the worlds. Oh yes. Other stuff. He so was, uh, started off. I think he was born around the 1850s. So he's a science fiction writer. He was a science fiction writer. He also went to a science college. He went to what college? A science college. Oh, He's really? From England. He grew up in England. So. Wow. No, I like this guy. Yeah, he's a he's a really interesting guy. He's one of the few things who used science. He learned a little bit of science and then he was going to write. He grew up in a town. I can't remember if it was Kent. I don't know where he really grew. Up. I don't remember. I didn't do all the history a lot on him like I probably should have. But he grew up <laughs> in a town with a lot of other writers, literary writers. Oh, really? The thing is, he would uh, to make some money. He'd write little stories, short stories for the magazines of England at the time. And he wrote a story about, I think it was called the Argonauts. It was about a little bit of time travel and stuff. Some guy said, "Hey, why don't you put this together and make a better time travel story?" Oh. So he wrote the Time Machine, and the Time Machine actually is a story about somebody using a machine. But it's not about the Time Machine. This whole book is really not about the Time Machine. No, it's not. It's about somebody taking science itself. So far, that they destroyed humanity. Yes. Plus the book, though, had elements of using a time machine, but also it had where he travels in the future. He uses uh, Darwin's evolutionary deal. Because mm -hmm. in the movie, what we're going to talk about, we see nothing but humans. Yes, we see in nothing but humans, yeah. The humans have evolved to something else that are shorter, smaller, and completely different. He describes them in terms that you would change. That humanity, because like the mouths get smaller, which it has actually happened. Yeah. There's people who are born now without wisdom teeth because of evolution. Yes, finally. So, yeah, too bad I wasn't one of those guys. Yeah, me neither. Right. <laughs> so I'm just going to hold on to my little... <laughs> <laughs> so, so I guess this is one of the oldest movies I've seen besides Gone with the Wind. Oh, is it really? Wow, yeah. I, I I watch old oh, movies. Oh, and um, what's the other one? What's the famous one? Oh, Wizard of Oz. Oh, Wizard of Oz, 19... I guess the only other 19... The oldest one I was seen is not... Nosferatu, oh, the vampire one. Yeah, the vampire one. I have not seen that. It's silent. Never and seen that you one. You know what? I could probably count on my hand what I say. Um, Gone with the Wind, right? Uh, Wizard of Oz and The Sound of Music. Wow. Sound <sighs> <No> of Music. <laughs> well, what yeah, is, is what, what is it from the seventies? It's an no, old movie. 60s. I think it's the sixties. You know why? Only uh, you know why I watch uh, Sound of Music. My mother loves Julie Andrews. Okay. So that's. Uh, what, yeah, she was Poppins. So. Yeah, Mary Poppins. Have you seen that... Mary Poppins? Oh, I see Mary Poppins. But Have that's you seen the... Disney movies? Oh yeah, I seen Disney movies. Yeah, well, I've seen old movies. Most of the Disney movies are nineteen fifties, forties. So I guess Snow White is old. Yes, Snow White's. Uh, thank I guess I want to say before I was born. Those are considered for me like old movies. Well, I mean, yeah, if we're talking about the golden age of Hollywood, though. We're talking like. Oh, then I could see the first Star Wars. It was before I was born. Yeah, it was before I was born. Too. Yeah, see, exactly. So, five? <laughs> no, there's a lot. Of, I don't know. I watch old movies. I well, like all the old movies. No, I like it. I like the how they made the production because now we're so used to special effects. Right? With this movie? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. They had, to, they had to use their smarts. On, <laughs> they do. I could tell them. You and I talked about that before a long time ago when we were talking about making movies, right? They used a matte painting on the uh, yes. one of the scenes. I could easily tell. Yeah, these are, yeah, you can't you tell this one. Well, I think it's actually a cut film is what they use. Oh, it's a cut film, definitely, yes. Other thing is where they use two different types of film and, and clipped it. But yeah, Matt Payne's is more uh, ILM days for Star Wars and stuff. 
Well, what I want to say about this movie is like it was released in 1960, right? At this, at that time, this movie would have blown my mind. And the funny, the neat thing is, most people that you find that still like this movie are people that watched it when they were kids. Nowadays, oh you know, really? So, yeah, because I've I've got on the internet because I was kind of interested in the time machine. Because mm-hmm. the time machine, I like the time machine. I mean, it's silly in a way. It's it's very uh, steampunkish yes. time machine. But the neat thing is. If you wanted to build you a time machine, this would be the easiest one to build because uh, oh, you're not yeah. really going to be able to build a door. Let me put it that way. It is. Um, and also, I realized that, like, I, I've never seen this time machine. The only way that I knew about this movie, right, is because from Big Bang Theory. Exactly. Well, I mean, I heard of this, but yeah, Big Bang Theory is the only way I've ever seen the time machine. And uh, they show you the machine immediately. Yeah. And after that, I've always wanted to see the, uh, the movie. Right. Because, you know, you and I are very. I watched time the travel. time machine. I watched the other time machine by DreamWorks. Oh yeah, with Guy Pierce. With Guy Pierce, which is actually very good too. I, I like it. I mean, as me and you love time travel, and yep, I love time uh, travel. We already got our own theory going, which is ours yep. is somewhat in line with Marvel's. Even the yes. Marvel think that their time stream goes along, changing and it flows back into the time right. stream. Hey, me, I don't believe that. Hey. Once you once you change the time stream. It flew along parallel. Right. Exactly. And you know what's really weird about this one? He doesn't change anything in the past on this movie because he keeps going forward. Yeah. Well, he does change one thing as he comes back. Oh, when he comes back. Yes. So it would have to be an alternate time. Yeah, it's alternate time. I so like how he, they does pace it. But the book is really cool because the book is almost, I mean, this movie is actually called J- H.G. H.G. Wells Time Machine, yes. Everybody calls it Time Machine, but at the very top of the title, it is H.G. Wells. That, that's why I have it on H. our H. title, Wells, too. The book almost follows it. It almost follows the book, except in the book, he goes almost straight to the future. All the movies, they, he kind of stops on the way and sees yeah. nuclear weapons. Yep. Which is, I want to point out, a lot of people love the Time Machine, but time, about the turn of the century, H.G. Wells started writing books like that, started writing kind of books about, he almost gave up on mankind in a way. Oh yeah. A book called the War in the Air about aircraft, where people are like, "If it happened, it did." He also wrote a book about the nuclear bomb. People told him that's not going to happen. It almost did. Wow. It oh, actually did. We have the nuclear bomb. Yeah, t- yeah. So he kind of gave up on mankind, trying oh. to teach mankind, because almost in a way he's the character. So go ahead, say the character in the movie. In the book, he's called the time traveler. Yes. In the movie, he's George, right? George, yeah. He's called George. George. He is H. He is H. G. Yeah. H. George Herbert George Wells. Yeah. Because it says on his time machine, built by Wells. Yes. Which is cool because there's a movie called Time After Time. It's about H. Uh, G. Wells using a time machine to fight Jack the Ripper. Okay, so that's the movie that they mentioned in Endgame, Time that's, After Time. And that's one that, that I want I want to review. Too. So of all these movies, um, it, the events are always like changing the past to change the future. A lot of them are, yeah. No, this one doesn't. No, this that's what I want to point out. This one doesn't, because he goes to the future, right? Like in my mind, I'm thinking like, okay, he never went to back to the past. He always he goes to the no future. Interest. Yeah, he has no interest. In <laughs> yeah, he has no interest in the book, and even this one, the movie. They ask him, so you're gonna, because I'm. That starts off with uh, what it starts off with them all, all these old men or older men, doctors, mayors, and so forth yeah. in England, waiting around for him. Yep, because he's supposed to show up. And talk to him. Which is a, a week after um, New Year's or Christmas? You no, know, it's it is on New Year's Day. Oh no, New Year's Day. This is on New Year's Day. New That's Year's right. Because it was a week before that we'll we'll go in the future. Yep. He got, he's they're waiting on him, and most of his characters appear. Only one of the characters had a name in the book, and that's the same character we see that. I'm gonna say he's Irish. David. Yeah, yeah, David. Yeah. What was his last name? Uh, I wrote it down here. So, uh, F- Philby? Phoebe? Yeah, by Philby. Yeah, Philby. And Philby owns, actually owns a shop. Yeah. Across from him, yes. They, they're right neighbors, yeah. But they're all waiting and they're trying to figure out what's he going to show them. They were getting anxious, right? Like, all yeah, angry. They're so, yeah, they're getting anxious. And finally he pops out. Right? He pops shows Well, he out. pops out because, like, they, there was a bunch of meat for dinner, right? And then, like, the housekeeper lady put them in the, um... The dining room, I guess the, the what they call it, the formal dining room, right? And then he shows up with his clothes all and torn. It looks like he was working at the minefield. And the, <laughs> yeah. they get intrigued and like, what the heck just happened? You know, you, you're in a movie called The Time Machine. When he shows up, 
he looks like he's already been through some rough times already. So that was really interesting. Because in the beginning, like these three characters, like to me, like they were very sophisticated. Well, you showed them the model that machine. Because I think I'm getting the movie oh. confused. Yeah, oh, you know what? You're right. Like, um, they tell the story. Of, they, no, in the beginning, they talk about the fourth dimension, which is time. Okay, yeah, okay. Well, we're going to go ahead. We'll just start it this way. Yeah, it's done, he has all these people sitting around, and he's going to show them a model. He finally shows yes. up. And he's going to show them something. He doesn't say what he's going to show them. No, it's, it's a little <laughs> thing, yeah. It is. It's, 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 it's neat. I want one. I want one so bad, but they're kind of expensive. And this way, yeah. crazy, like the small one, he even do the experiment on the little toy model. Like the, yeah. the toy model went, I guess, uh, uh, forward in time, right? Yeah. But we should go ahead because the four dimensions is actually an interesting concept. Not to us now. But no. everyone knows what a line is. A line that is just comes constantly. Yeah, the X, line. yeah, yeah. In, uh, I'm going to say in the Marvel, it's a circle. Yes. But, uh, go figure. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, so far the time machine works there, too. But He's talking about the fourth dimension. In the old in the old times, people argued what the fourth dimension was. Right. G. Wells is one of the first people to call it time. Oh. And then, of course, along came a man named uh, some genius, you know, <laughs> I forgot what his name was. But he decided that the fourth dimension was time, too. Einstein? Are you talking about Einstein? Yeah. yeah. I knew his name started with the E. I right? almost said Thomas, but like, no, um, Albert well, Einstein. I don't know. It could have been Thomas, too. Edison was pretty uh, ahead of his thing too. Yeah, a lot of these. Was, smart for guys somebody like... wasn't ever educated at the college. Yeah, <laughs> which I would point out. The fourth Unlike dimension. his rival, who everybody loves, named Tesla, who was educated at college to be a scientist. <laughs> so, so yeah, so he pulls out this box and he's got the machine and he also talks about the dimensions. Of course, if any, all of us should know one dimension's forward, back, this side, and up and down. And if you play with a 3D printer, you better know all this crap. Yep. You're going to have problems. Or if you draw anything in CAD. Oh, yeah. But Auto -cat. It's time because you're moving. It's like having a box. But a second now, you have a box. And anybody wants to argue, by the way, the time travel is not true. Somebody tells you time. It's true because every minute you're yeah, moving. Yeah, you're in, moving forward in time. Yeah. You never stay stationary. So you're always moving through the fourth dimension, even hundreds of seconds. Yes. The only time, the time that they know so far that people slow down in the fourth dimension is people that's over in the Earth on the space station. Oh, fences. yes. They're hundreds of a second behind us. And I think the theory goes that uh, it's supposed to be Einstein. If you, you travel the speed of light, the faster you go, the slower time for you is. Yes, yes, yes. I do remember that, yes. So basically, in any ways, I guess we travel through time, and I'm sure anybody could probably build a time machine, but it's going to be have to be the size of a room and use so much electricity that I don't know. You'll probably get hundreds of a second behind somebody. So the best so, way to time travel right now is just really go into space. Yeah, so far you got to go. Space. And, Plus it's the safest because, well, you want to get a little farther away from the Earth, but let's say you're traveling in the future. You're liable to hit something that's going to be there in the future. Right. So I want to say like to travel into space, right? it's not because you have the power to do it. You're just traveling slowly with time. Yeah. Because you're uh, outside the government. Well, plus, the problem is you in a spaceship, you're moving faster in space. Moving yeah. Thousands of miles a, a minute, I think, or a second. I don't know how fast you're going. You're going way beyond what you can go on Earth because you got because on Earth, you can only go so fast because of the atmosphere. Wow. I mean, that's why the satellites and stuff burn up when they hit the Earth because they're going hundreds of miles. Right. So... Space would be the safest deal, but it's the fourth dimension. Of course, wrote, he pulls out that little bitty toy. Yeah, I wrote down the time. It's uh, 1899, like the New Year's Eve in 1899. Yeah. He pulls yeah, out that little toy. Yeah, because they wish a Happy New Year's, too. Yeah, I, I, I like, like that he made the little toy time machine. Oh, yeah. it's awesome. Like, that's the most work. It's got a little lever on it. Yeah. Well, the thing is, it's got a, like a little wheel on the back, a big giant wheel bigger than a guy. It's got like a wooden chair with a red tannish seat in it. Yes. Wrapped in brass bars, sitting on a wood platform, and in front of them, where you'd sit, you would look at a little panel. It's a round disc. It looks like wires hanging off the back, a few wires. What did that look like to you the first time you saw it? Like, did think... you see it from the movie, or did you see it from Big Bang Theory? I saw it from Big Bang Theory. Okay, so the first saw, time... I think I actually saw a model of it in a modeling book. Oh, okay. Big Bang Theory. Mainly to see it like it is. Yeah. Like we saw Big Bang Theory. 
Okay, so the first time I saw this was in Big Bang Theory too, right? And when I saw this thing, and they call it a time machine, I thought this was something like like Santa used to use before he got his sleigh, right? Because it's it looks like that. Like I it, guess, it uh, I the funny thing is, it didn't really. Uh, I didn't question to be honest with you. Oh, I didn't question it either. Well, because I knew I already knew about the time machine movie stuff. I didn't ever saw the movie really, but I had an idea that it wasn't I mean, a DeLorean. I mean, before this movie, right? The only time machine that I knew was the DeLorean. Yeah. Well, and then after that, the the phone booth from Bill and Ted. Yeah, the, that's well. Yeah, the same thing here. I mean, come on, because that's what we grew up with. First time machine, time movie, I pretty much ever saw was uh, Back to the Future. But yeah, the first not... time, as far as I know, the first time story is actually written by Mark Twain. Oh. It's a, it's a New York Yankee in King uh, Arthur's Court. Oh, Yankee, uh, King, Yankee. It's about somebody waking up in King Arthur's Court, and I think the closest movie they made is Black Knight. Remember, Martin Lawrence. Oh, at the yeah, the yeah, the Black Knight. Yes. That's, yeah. Is that yeah, based on that movie? I mean, based on that book? I mean, yes, it is. But they did make a 1930s movie on of this. Really? But that's going way back. I don't know if we can get, get our hands on something like that. Oh, that's I don't know. Yeah. Wow. I, I got to see that now. I had no idea. Yeah, you know what? what I think I have 90s. seen it because they came out in the 90s, right, with Martin Lawrence? Yes, but see, up to that point, time pretty much was without a machine. It's usually you woke up in a dream or something. Yeah. Oh. But this guy built a machine. He built a machine. Yeah, he's Doc Brown yeah. in this case. He actually so, yeah, went... He, in a oh. way, this is kind of back to the future. Yeah, you know? he's back to the future. Did you know the scene where in, uh, Doc Brown puts Einstein inside the car, the dog, and it takes off and it zips away and it comes back? That's him testing out the model on the table. Yes, yes, that, yeah, because he, he went ahead one minute, yes. Now, this is where we actually need a physicist, because, okay, on the table... The, the machine has a lever and it's got a little deal it spins it tells you the time mm -hmm. kind of like the one in the time machine but yep. it has the time machine show, the DeLorean shows three times yep. this one will show you one so you push the lever forward to go forward in time back to go back in time so yeah. the guy breaks the scar and he makes the uh, time machine disappear right in front of him yep. but here's my question and you almost need a physicist for this and we could discuss this out shouldn't the time machine be sitting there Yes, it shouldn't disappear. Well, that's the funny thing. The book has has, has people ask him, shouldn't the time machine still be sitting there? Yeah. And I can't remember how he explains it. But that's the thing. It's If it's going to occupy all the times all the way to the future, yeah. you would think you see it. But can you see it? Because it's got to go fast, right? Why it's sitting still. Oh. So if it's going faster than light, then light should be able to, it shouldn't uh, reflect light then. So it should be invisible. So that's why we don't see it. Maybe. That's what I want to know. I oh, we... that's why we need a physicist. That's right. Because, no, you're right. Because in order to travel through time, right, you need to travel faster than the speed of light. So but technically, see... that, that object, right, let's just say this object, right, is still yeah. there. We just can't see it because it doesn't yeah, reflect that's the way they light. describe it in the book, which is funny because I'm like, they're describing it in the 18, because the book is written in 1890-something. Oh, my god! I think it's written in 1898. I'm like, this is, this is before they had all these other scientists, guys. Yeah, Wow. So, you know, there's always a, people always made this funny theory that H.G. Wells himself actually had a time machine. That's why you see it. Oh, moving. it makes sense too. Okay. No, he, he I, knows all this stuff. I do. I like that connection. Because he no. saw World War II before it happened. Yeah, he saw everything before it happened, but then no one will believe you, right? Like, let's just say if we quick. go back. Yeah. Isn't it creepy? <laughs> it is creepy. You would be taking us the crazy person. If you would yeah, come back now, like, hey. Thing. That's the thing, though. If you have a time machine, would you see the time? What if see the outside of the time machine but you can't see anything in it. no i just wonder how would it work because like okay because when the, the the spaceship's going around in space but it depends on how fast you're going wow because yes. it's like on uh, space movies like so people have an argument about star trek okay and they could probably go with uh star wars too when they get they go to light speed all that they always warp the ship they actually yeah. warp their ship they have a field around it and that's how they move through space but the problem is you always see these light on the screen yeah you shouldn't be able to see people that say yeah they say it should be just a dark yeah it just be it should be instant like disappear yeah. but, well that's the thing as you're traveling light speed you know you see the the lights they say you shouldn't see anything along the side of the ship you should only see like uh maybe a light dot in front of you yeah that's it because it. it should move all the lights to the middle yeah all the lights to the middle because that's moving in the speed of light and that's the last thing that reflects light oh my yeah. god
But but that's the thing. What will it look like on a time machine? I mean, I can get going, and that's the neat thing is going to the future. Somebody can do this. This is possible. Yeah. They can if, if it's doing, being done in space, it could be done on Earth, Bob. Going to the past, I can't see any way you can ever. No, go going to past, to the past, you have to go even faster. That's why they say it's lightly too easy to go to the future. But once you but, get there, you can't come back. That's the thing. You're not going to go backwards. How, how are you going to go to the negative? You can't. Because like the thing is, you weren't ever there anyway. So yeah. you would almost have to jump out of this existence into another one yeah. and make another timeline to so, be in it. So the funny thing is, when we talk about looking at it from the outside, right? Like the time machine is there, but we just can't see it. What does it look like from inside looking out? Yeah, that's the thing. If you're going that fast, are you going to be able to see light either? Maybe you shouldn't see anything. So it's just this blank it's state? Black. Yeah, the blank state, yeah. yeah. Because there's no light. There's nothing escaping or coming in. Yeah. It'd be just blackness. To wow, it. you just blew my mind. So, like, this movie is uh, already hey, wrong. We're, this is what we're going to do. We're going to blow each other's mind. It, it is really weird. I because... didn't ever think about I never thought about uh, Because, you know, the thing is, I never thought about not being able to see it in the time machine. Yeah. Until you asked me. Because, like, the, the way it this. Doesn't make sense. Yeah. So, it let me. Looking at your shirt. <laughs> yeah. So, exactly. So, right now, I'm thinking in a way, like, in this movie, like he's sitting there, right, and he's watching the mannequin change clothes, so he shouldn't be able to see any of this. Yeah, he shouldn't be able to see anything. But again, <clears> you <throat> wouldn't have a very good story either. No, you wouldn't, because it tells you like, oh, the fashion's been changing as it's going yeah. through time. And I mean, and a part of this, this is corny. This can be corny to you, but it's not because I know it's nineteen sixties, and they they knew what they could do. Yeah, this. Oh wow. Because because here's the neat thing: because we he makes the the deal go away. And those guys still can't believe what they say. But Philby, his friend, which is actually an important character, because you, Philby's almost the only character from this movie that makes it in the next time machine movie. No, yeah, no, because uh, he, he see him in the 1960s or 1940s. Yeah, he'll see him several times. But the problem is he don't see Philby, though. He sees his son. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, thing. But we want to talk about now. So Philby gives him the benefit of the doubt because everybody else doesn't believe him. So they all get on the cart and they, they get on the horse cart and go away. Yeah. Is the turn of the century. Bill B sticks around and asks him, kind of worried about him because he doesn't know to take this. Yeah. He says, Hey, do you want to come over to my house? Me and my wife are going to stay in tonight because we have our son Jamie. Yes. There. And he's like, Well, he's kind of abrupt with him, but he's like, I apologize to you, Dan. I mean, I apologize to you, bro, David. He goes, But uh, I think I'm going to stay here. And yeah, because he wanted to use the time machine. Yeah. So he goes there, yeah. He's got to do this time machine. Can't wait. He's because, I mean, we already know this guy's obsessed with time because he's like uh, Doc Brown, clocks all over his house. Yes. And first, the scene starts off with clocks in the darkness, kind of like Twilight. You know? Wow. But I like it. He goes over to the table and he's, he's like, he writes a note that next week from now that he's going to have dinner with everybody. Yes. Note of it. Basically, gives it to the housekeeper. She's going to bed. So he goes into his, uh, Laboratory. Is it laboratory or his sunroom? I don't know what it is. It's right it next to his sunroom, but he calls it labor laboratory. Yeah, laboratory because he's English. Yeah, I wish I had a laboratory in my house. <laughs> had nothing but windows like a green room. Yeah, like it's a green. Because cool, if you really think about this, this bother you, and it shouldn't have bothered me. But you know, he's watching the, uh, the. You know, we see him looking outside. He's looking across the street. Yeah, through all the windows in the sunroom, but the sunroom doesn't even face. The street. No, it doesn't. Hat. Yeah, it's it's like it's his backyard or something. Yeah, it's his backyard. Like I noticed that. Like, what's he looking at? <laughs> How can he see this? Because it's not it's not at the front of his house. It, yeah, it's not in the front of his house. It's so strange. But the neat thing is, we finally see the time machine. Yeah, is he he got he gets you in it. I, mean? and... I can't remember what they call it in the Big Bang Theory. It's a time I think machine. They call it, what did they call it? Like, uh, they, I think they made it fun of they they said said uh Penny said something about it. Did yeah. she say, I think that was like the, uh, was, Dude, that's like, like 14 years ago. I can't remember. I know. She says a singer's name and she thought it was like his car or his Pope mobile. Oh, Elton John. Elton goes, John. Elton John's Pope mobile. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, the Velvet Elton John, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's the yeah, Velvet. It's got all kinds of stuff. It's, but come on, it's steampunk to the core. Yeah, it's steampunk to the core. Yeah, definitely. This is probably because when steampunk has a moon. But I tell you what, Shane, if I ever seen that like a life size, I'm going to sit in this thing. Oh, I'm going to sit in this thing. And then, then I want to pull the lever. 
if it's if it's left out, oh, I'm driving my pickup out there and loading it up. Uh, yeah, I'm like, I'm pulling this lever. Like, hey, where's the thing? I know this is removable. I seen the movie. Yeah, Give I it saw to the me. movie. Like yeah, because it. it's like a key. Because it's but yeah. it's got a crystal ball on the yeah. end of it with a knob. So he screws it into the deal and he jumps it. Well, he does a little more work on it because he knows something's broken. Yeah. I'm like, how would you? How can you tell? I I, I don't know. It's basically, it looks like a sled yeah, it's like, with a parachute why, on the back of it. Yeah, it's that's sp- why I compare with Santa's sleigh. <laughs> here's the sad thing. At the same time, I still think it's awesome. No, it is. Oh, I, I don't I know why. I, I don't think I'm like, it's dull at all. I think it's awesome. Because you know what? You know, because yeah, this thing you can travels all through time. Jokes about it. Yeah, you can make all kinds of jokes about it. But it's still, I it's can't. like, I could actually build this time machine. I, I, I can't make a joke about this. I love this time traveling thing too much. I know. I love the machine too. I mean, come on. It's. It's the machine. I only know three time machines so far. Yes, it's that I can think of. Actual time. I mean, like this is probably the first time, in, like, because way before Back to the Future was released, right? This is the first time anyone has seen a time machine. They don't know yes, what they look exactly. like. You know? Exactly. I don't it's know what it looks point. like. Oh yeah, I want to point out this is it's neat. Okay, one of the people working on this production. I mean, I, I wish I could remember his name. He worked on Star Trek's production. Oh, uh, he did. It's, I think it's Wei Chang is what his name is. Oh, you know what? I would have done the same thing if I was producing Star Trek. Like, hey, how do we do this? Like, hey, who you know, worked this, on this movie? I think this is interesting because since you're being Chinese, this would be interesting to you. I think his name was Wei Chang. Mm-hmm. He came from China as a poor boy. No. And he, he did artwork and stuff. He finally got into film production. He is the guy who made the phasers, the, the, the tricorders, and the communicators for Star Trek. Really? I also helped work on the time machine in China. He also did clay dinosaurs. He did a lot of stuff. Oh, I can see the claymation in this movie, too. Yeah. When the lava stuff, yeah. Yeah, so this guy, and, and I just thought, well, this would be interesting to you. Cause oh, it is really is- interesting. Yeah. Well, he yeah. made it. He's probably one of the first Chinamen that came out of China and made it in America. He is one of, he is one of the top special effects guys of the 1960s oh I, yeah i bet because this is like for this time right this still he, blew he my mind almost when he was a kid producing stuff oh i can't remember if his parents were artists or not no his parents did so he already have a high imagination yes oh he had an extremely high imagination i mean like i said he made all this stuff and he doesn't really get a lot of recognition no because he's a th- he's the guy who did the props people don't most people don't care about the prop guys anyway no which is a shame because, man, I love props. I do too. You know what's you know what's really funny, Shane? Uh, to this day, right? I'm still debating on like I look on Etsy at least once a week at the stupid Blade Runner gun. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> got one. <laughs> so actually, I got all three. I actually bought all three of them. I I almost did right because like oh it's twenty four dollars. I'm like oh, and then shipping is twenty four bucks. I'm like shoot. <laughs> oh man, and you need to look around because mine didn't cost that much. Well, but it's three guns kind of... about forty bucks, but I didn't get uh shipping. But I got all three guns. Plus, I got a phaser. I got to finish putting together over here too. You know, one of these days, I'm gonna show you know showing that gun like my uh, uh, Iron Man call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with my Mandalorian helmet on. <laughs> I thought about putting a Mandalorian on, but then I have headphones. I'm like, man, I I gotta find another way about this. <laughs> Hey, you know what? It's gonna be cool. What? Then Chin comes out. Senchi. Oh, Senchi, yes. See that helmet, that little mask that they wear with yeah. the hood on. Oh, I don't know. Oh. It's awesome. But anyways, this guy finally gets in the time machine, puts a little key in, pushes forward just to see what's gonna happen. Let's make sure he doesn't get killed. Yep. And of course, the only thing he realizes is the time has changed on his watch. Yes. You know what I really like about this too? Like that time machine is stationary. Yes. That's the big thing for me. Like, it's not like the DeLorean, right? You know, it, the DeLorean makes sense too because it's a car that go. So wherever it goes in time, right, it goes back to that place. But okay? wouldn't that the DeLorean too itself driving down the road? But that that messes with their deal too. Should it disappear? Yeah. Or hey, shouldn't we see it all the way to instead of fire? Were you the one that told me about that? Like um, you know, the Earth moves too. Yeah. So shouldn't it not be exactly at the Pine Valley Mall? Or Twin Pines Mall. Yeah, be. you know what I'm talking about. It could be like in the middle of the ocean. He could be in Arizona or something like that, right? Know. Maybe because of the speed he's going. Oh. This, so. It would. It still would. But maybe it would move it ahead. Okay. Oh, it could even move ahead, or he could be yeah backwards. It, I don't know. 
I'm not a physicist. I'm not be able to hit if it's moving fast. Yeah. But I like this because it stays in one location. Like, yeah, it stays in one just location. Just that time. Yeah. It's hopefully a tree or something doesn't grow up where he's sitting. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, the tree doesn't grow up. Reunion or whatever. I don't he... know how, if anything could come into it. Could you, if it's invisible, would you be able to touch it? Oh, like the James Bond deal? Like if you walk into it, cause, just because the light doesn't reflect it, well, you can walk into it. Car, yeah, this is a car with a car. <laughs> no, this thing, is it's not reflecting light. But it's still there physically. Cooling all the light, right? But it's still there physically. Still, it should be still there physically, right? Right. So you should be able to touch it, or you should be able to bump into it. Yeah, you should be able to bump. Like you're running in this field, right? and then suddenly you bumped into something. Like what yeah, the heck just happened? Exactly. It should be like Star Trek Four, where those guys run into the park and they run into the Klingon <laughs> ship, and they're like, "What is this?" <laughs> so it's interesting. You, you talk about how black my shirt is, right? You know, yeah. they they made a paint. It doesn't uh, absorb light, right? There's no light reflection. Have you seen this? People paint stairs with this light. So when you look at it, right, it looks like just a blank space, but you could walk on it. But then it's so hard to tell, right? It's like, dude, I don't know what I'm standing on. <laughs> that would be awesome, but I'd probably break my neck. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like, because it doesn't uh, reflect light, so you can't see those yeah. shadows or nothing. Well, the you know what? Now that I know that, I'm going to buy some of this paint. No, you should. It's quite expensive, though. But yeah. it's the same well, concept. It's the same concept yeah. with this time machine. Like, because even though like uh, George is traveling through time, right? If suddenly I'm walking in England, I'm walking to this field, right? And I'll be like, bump inches, and I'm like, dude, what the heck just happened? Yeah. <laughs> but we don't we don't see this in this movie, so no. I don't know. I mean, but it's I mean, interesting. I, to I, bring I would up. like that question answered, because you know he travels all the way to the future to get a question answered. Why don't you just stay there and call somebody and ask the? Oh yeah. Stop in, uh, in our time and ask uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> It's like looking at the phone book. Oh, that's a lot of businesses I could talk about. This was like TV. I'll ask him. If we have Neil deGrasse Tyson on, right? These are the kind of questions I'm just going to ask him because he's going to do the math. By the way, if anybody's watched a lot of podcasts, you can already figure out who our favorite business is. <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. We know there's other businesses out there and get a show. We'll know who you are. I'm like, man, I could listen to him for hours. Yeah. If you made Cosmos, I know who you are. Yeah. Or show up on Big Bang Theory. Cosmos. He showed on a Big Bang Theory twice, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, but hey, never showed up on Star Trek. Did hey, he show up on Star Trek? No, right? Not that I know of. Oh, okay. Well, not right <laughs> now, because they, they do have new series. Man. Hawking's showing up on, on, on Star Trek. Did he? Yep. Oh, awesome. Him with um, Einstein, a fake Einstein. <laughs> In a fake Newton theory. Hey, Data's going to have people to hang out with, okay? Yes, definitely. <laughs> so, but anyways, this guy times that time machine, so he finally hits the way. He just goes with it. Yeah, the eight, uh, 800,000, right? The eight, yeah. yeah, 800. It's supposed to be a winner, so you can see the ice on the deal and the sun keeps moving. They did all kinds of pretty special effects to yep. show, try to show you. Oh, like which is a way ahead of his time. Moving. Yeah. And of course, the neat thing is the thing across the the dress, which they keep actually keep for the next time machine movie. Oh yes. Which oh. neat because it actually does if you know if you read a lot of books and stuff, or I got like Sears catalog nineteen hundreds on up. Wow. So you kinda of know the material the machinery and stuff. Oh, I got a bunch of books on the machinery. I love books. So <laughs> so you know, you're watching the so you if you if you know women's fashion point because you know the dresses raises up. Yeah. Because you know it's very a no no. Yes. So you yes. know the dresses raise up. I, mean, I like it because first I see dresses and to me the I'm like, that's like a grandma dress, a great grandma <laughs> dress. He's like, there's a dress that not even no woman want to be seen in. I'm like, what? Wow. Wait till you get to the '60s. You're gonna have a heart attack. Oh, see, that's why I thought because they make the movie in the '60s, right? I think that's why, like, they he, they only he stopped at the '40s about the machines running weird and then the war. Well, he, and then, he made it to '68. He made it to '68. Yeah. Goes up because that's uh, eight years. So I'm thinking that's a little far fetched for eight. I hate when they do that on a sci-fi movie. Yeah. But, you know, the Blade Runner. Demolition Man. Was, yeah, Blade Runner. Well, yeah. Well, Lost in Space, the original TV show. Yeah. They leave in 1998. I'm like, what? Yeah. In the 60s. Well, I'm, I guess I, they thought we we're going to make it real far. But in Blade Runner. 2012. Yes, yeah, 2019, yeah. 1980s? How? Hey, you know what? Because you're trying to judge your real life to a fictional timeline. I thought about that a long time ago, too. 
Well, my they should get really far out because you know Star Trek 1960s, but they're in the year 2263. Yeah, 2263. Yeah. So they gave themselves a, a big gap. Even yeah, though that they made up a, a war that goes on in 1998. Yeah. But anyways, hey, try not to get so close to the your time. That, that's what I don't like movie. about movie. But then you think about it, it's a fictional movie. I know. Right? You know? But like when we get to it, like 2015, like the future, like where are my lace up Nikes in the flying car in the hoverboard? Hey, you know what? No, okay. Oh, I got out the deal. Hey. I, I probably said this before, right? Like, okay. But Back to the Future is the only movie that people compare themselves to. It is. Like, they don't compare themselves to another futuristic movie. Like, hey, how come we don't have this item yet? The only other no, movie I, I think of is like Demolition all Man. All the time. You know? The no, Demolition Man. You know, like the three seashells. Oh, like, I don't, how don't, we don't have that? Man. That's a bad feature. <laughs> <laughs> but then, Back to the Future is the only one that people talk about. About the future. The only thing I got out of that is the sunglasses. I got those future sunglasses. Oh, sunglasses, yeah. No one but goes to another movie reference like, hey, how come we don't have this justice system yet? Or whatever. No, yeah, no. It's exactly. just Back to the Future. I want to go back to sunglasses. I got those sunglasses when the movie came out. If you wear them in 2015, you would look like an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> nobody else was wearing them. It's probably a good thing we didn't get a hoverboard in a... Oh, or a hat like that. <laughs> oh, yeah, a hat like that. Thank goodness. We would have laughed at. Yeah. So, I, oh, what's up? 2015, here we are. So, I want to bring us back to the movie, right? So, he went from the 60s all the way to the year, like, 802,000, right? Like, yeah. Well, we should, we should just point out part, though, cause, where he stops. Because, you know, he stops uh, right before World War One or during World War One. He's He does he it towards the end of World War One, and he sees... He says, uh, he thinks it's his friend David. Yes, but it's his but son. It turns out it's his dad. I oh, know his son. Yeah, his son. James. Jack. Jack. No, I put Jack here. No, his name was James. Because oh. remember, he says Jamie. Oh, I his put His name's James. Yeah, he goes, my dad died in the war. Which yeah. Shocked that he died in the war. That's a and theme with this movie, movie, right? Yeah. <laughs> war. Every time you stop at a time, right, there's some kind of war going on and there's a yeah, siren there's going on. There's mankind destroying itself. Yep. Tech. That's the whole point. Mankind destroying itself with technology. He's kind of shocked, and of course, when the guy goes in, he calls him Jamie. Yes. And the guy's like, "What?" Yeah. I was like, "I know my real name." So he jumps in the time machine, goes forward a little further, boom, stops in nineteen forty-eight. Was it nineteen? No, nineteen six. No, nineteen sixty-eight. Well, the only dates I wrote down is nineteen forty and nineteen sixty-six. Oh yeah, he just stops in nineteen forty. Yeah, for World War Two. World War Two. He's a, but he doesn't really stop. He sees his house gets blown up from yeah. around him. Which I'm like, good thing he's moving fast or he loses the time machine and all yeah. that stuff. He realizes it's World War II. Then he goes further and then he stops in the future and he hears all the air raid signs. Yes. And of course, all those people are running through the New York, uh, the London Underground. Yeah. That's the, it's, uh, it's always a siren going off every time he stops. Yeah. Yeah. Some kind of noise to warn people, like, hey, go to this place for safety. Yeah, that's yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, the siren is always going off. Mm -hmm. and of course, he runs into Jamie, his oldest cell. Yes. Trying to tell him to go on the ground. He's got all these questions. He's too busy. He's got all these questions he wants to answer. This yeah. guy's like, "Hey, dude, we're about to get dude." Yeah. Of course, you see these. What is it? Atomic satellites. You see it fly over. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you what. When he dropped the nuclear bomb, we see that blast. It should have killed him. It would have killed yeah, him. Yeah, I thought it was good, but he got back in a time machine to go even further back uh, into the future. Not back, but like farther yeah, into cool. the future. Man, he just hits that gear and he's just flying. Just let it fly, yeah. And the thing is, the world destroys itself. And there's law and volcanoes. Of course, a mountain built around him. Yeah, I he like that. Made, but when it goes away, you know, it looks like a bunch of little rocks disappearing. <laughs> I like that this guy, like, like H.G. Wells... He, you know, he's always into, like, I guess mankind destroying itself, right? But he's able to predict that the Earth would be around for 800,000 years. Yeah. Well, I guess it makes sense because he's a man of science. And he said the Earth is millions of years old. Yeah. I mean, it was another million. Yeah, well, of course, we got to remember this is the filmmakers and not really his book. Man. We're yeah. Already, we've already got out of his book. Basically. Oh, so his book doesn't go to 18... Oh, his book goes all the way to the future, but the future is way different. He'll oh. run into a pretty blonde chick. Oh, yeah, they did that for cinema. He runs into uh, another form of humanity. Is it the Morlocks, though? No, he runs in. He runs into the Elo, Elos. Elos, okay. The Eli, Eli is it Eli, whatever. Well, they can, the E-L-O-I, how do you spell that? Elo? Oh, Eli? Eli? Yeah, Eloy. Yeah, Eloy's. 
Yeah, the Eloys. He runs into them first, and then he finds the other ones on the ground. What was that? What were they called? Bro? The Warlocks? The Warlocks. Yeah. But in his book, they like the Warlocks are a creature, and the Eloys were uh, a, a different creature. creature. Yeah, it's not somebody who wouldn't want to get with them. So you're saying that, like, I guess in the 60s when they made this movie, right? They didn't want to make it so complicated where people won't understand it, it sounds like. I don't think it's so. Yeah, because it would be before. easy to, like, oh, humans are well, still around. remember uh, in the 60s, Darwin really wasn't something they wanted taught in schools. Yeah. And evolution, as far as they're concerned, didn't exist because there's I'm, no way we think the monkeys. I'm, su- I'm surprised they don't think he's a wizard. The book, nowhere does Darwin think this came from monkeys. Yeah. I don't no. know where that came from. I don't know. Now, just, I don't know where from. I'm science people. <laughs> Stupid people. But anyway, so he goes to the future because we see as he's going to the future, though, we see the nice buildings form up. And then when he stops, he stops so fast, he gets thrown out of the machine, which happens in the book, too. He gets thrown out of the machine. And then we realize he, it flew so fast that when he gets thrown out of the machine, the buildings are all tore up now. Yeah. And so like, he crashes in front of this building with this evil looking monster face. Yes. Ah, I'm like, I don't know if I'd get out of here. I'm like, they really like Halloween here. And <laughs> it's all year Halloween. He stopped yeah, at the first, spirit store. I mean, everything's green now. Everything's green. Yeah, everything's like green. And there's fruit everywhere, and he's walking through the forest. And he goes up to one of those dome buildings, goes in there. The top of it's gone, but there's plates set all around. Yeah, like if someone's getting ready for a feast, like a, yeah. Yeah, a gathering. Like a gathering. And, of course, it makes an echo because the way the shape of the building is. Mm-hmm. And then so he leaves again, and he finds the people finally. Yeah, but, but then they're all fight. young. Yeah, and here's the funny thing is, they're all white and blonde-headed. Yeah, I thought now, it was I like... to tell y'all, I, I mean, I know my own evolution now. Uh, by the year, what is it, 21, 22, there's not going to be a such thing as a blonde person or blue-eyed person. Yeah, because it's mixed, right? Like, Well, no, because our genes aren't... Uh, a dominant. dominant, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, we're slowly moving in. Plus, the Earth's getting hotter. I don't know this, but if I get out in the sun, I'm going to burn up. So if I had kids, I would hope that they'd have a little bit darker skin than me. Because uh, I don't want to burn because it sucks. Yeah, exactly. Getting out the sun and getting sunburned. You know what's really funny? I guess I, your, sun, your skin burns, right? Mine, I can take the tan very well. Yeah, you're lucky. It, it takes me a long time to get burned. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. I, I, if I go out in an hour... I got a problem. Oh, no. I was walking oh, really? dogs for like at least an hour sometimes, and I, I just get darker. Yeah, no. Here in Texas, uh, I always tell people, I'm like, if you see some smoke coming on my head, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to like bacon. <laughs> I'm like, me and you are the same Texas sun. You see how dark I am? Because I've been walking outside. <laughs> well, see, actually, look at my arms. You can see. You can see my arms. Yeah, yeah, the farmer's tan. Right? I have to do it slowly, though. Once I get tan, yeah, I don't have a problem. I, I actually will hold a tan. Oh. I mean, if I was a ginger, ginger, <laughs> that'd be <laughs> That's it. That's so messed up. <laughs> if I was a ginger. No tan. There ain't no tan going on there. <laughs> but now, yeah, it is. I, that, that's the thing. But I would no. hope in evolutionary, you're going to turn dark. Yeah. These people are light, and they're out in the sun. I'm like, huh. I guess you're right. Like your life. when you talk about the scene about the blind people, right? Like, I guess you're right. Like today's age, right? If I was seeing that today, like, what? Why is it all blind people? In a, in a way, I was like, did Hitler win the war? <laughs> that's the that's the only logical explanation to me. Like, yeah, I never thought about that, but it does puzzle me because I mean, well, I, I guess, well, it's 1960s, so and it yeah. is in England. The yeah, film, I'm pretty sure this was filmed in England. Yeah, it's fine. Well, maybe that's the, the reason. I'm going to hope that's the reason behind it. Just like everybody's blonde. But, but you white. know, in Hollywood in the 1960s, honest, I mean, in the future, we know it's not the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. Most likely. But, you know, 60s, people did stuff like that. Yeah, you I guess. Color people, even though there's a Chinese guy making all the special effects. <laughs> Forget about him. <laughs> and it's so funny when you said that, like, I have the dominant gene because I have the black hair and the dark skin. Well, I do now, but you know, if yeah, I, my genes are overtaking your blonde stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait till you have a kid with that blue eyes. <laughs> <laughs> then that's when uh, I have more questions. Uh, I have a follow-up question. <laughs> Why does my son have blue eyes? Because he's one of the weird <laughs> ones. Probably not gonna get the answer before. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's genetics, you it's, dummy. Well, some what genetics didn't work. Like there's, the there's some Chinese kids with blue eyes, cause like it's the it's the mutation thing, I think. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. I mean, it's still dominant in a way. I mean, it's just what's the dominant mean is how many times it occurs in your genetic makeup. Yeah. For example, yeah, I meet somebody that it's like let's say like yourself, but they have somebody of my makeup in their DNA. In their gen- yes, in their gen- then I have a better. There's a better chance the kid's gonna look like me. Yep. Now, if they're just Chinese all the way to the core, <laughs> no problem. Because I'm like I'm mixed too, so we got a problem. <laughs> oh, they come look like they're from Norway. <laughs> yeah. Might have to have my son do the 24 exactly. and me in the future. Hopefully, more do people do it by then. They get a better answer of where I come from. You know? Yeah. I mean. I, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, the worry part is the people using it against you medical. Yeah, you know, it's way really funny. I like how we just talk about the time machine from the blind people, right? To genetics and DNA. Well, the problem is the whole book, and this is what this book is really about. Though. Oh yeah. We're hitting what the time machine was really about. Oh okay. Basically, I mean, that's the thing. That was the whole story of the future. We're talking about. I mean, we're talking about relevant stuff. No, you are. The time machine, because the time machine. It's not just, hey, I got a time machine with the future. This is crap. Came back. Oh, but, no, this is different. Yeah, me to be blonde people and that one girl's drowning and nobody does anything. So I found that was really weird. Like, no one helped her, right? And he was, like, yelling at all of them. Like, hey, not, nobody's seeing this? Like, what's going on? Yeah. Well, I read the book. So how was uh, that compared but to this, the book? No, it wasn't. Well, he picks up a girl out of the water, saves her. Okay. But I don't remember everybody standing around watching in the book. Well, not some but people are not even watching. Is, basically, I know what the Eli are because... We got uh, these things out in the field that do the same thing. They're called cows. <laughs> yes. They just sit there and watch. Their cow gets attacked by a cougar, a man, an animal. Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, it's we have them, it's not cows. my problem. Yeah, the cows are sitting there going, hmm, that sucks. <laughs> because later, she even asked him, like, why did you come save me? She, was, yeah. she thought it was strange, too. Yeah, because all those people just sit there like, no big deal. Because basically, you're supposed to get the idea from them. They're cows. Yes, they're cows. They are just cows. You know what they they mentioned that, uh, not not yeah, they. Amazing. There's another movie. Have you ever seen it called Ransom with Mel Gibson and Gary Sinise? I heard of. I, I never Gary Sinise talked about the exact same thing. There's a scene where they're driving, right? Like uh, you don't know Gary Sinise is the bad guy, and he's driving. He's telling Mel Gibson they're driving on the highway. You don't know why. Like, <laughs> what? Then I hope I still don't know, or I won't, I won't even see the movie now. No, so he talk about this scene. He talk about like, hey, have you seen seen this movie, The Time Machine? There's two groups of people, Eloys and Morlocks. He's trying to tell Mel Gibson's character, right? He's the Eloy because they're cows. Basically, they're just cows. Yeah. You you just listen to what the Morlocks can. Basically, the Morlocks control you. Cause Gary yeah. Sinise is trying to say that he's the one that's controlling him, and that's oh. really badass statement. Like now, I doubt now I understand that scene better. Now I've seen this movie. Wow. Yeah, it's scary. Sinise is very sinister in that movie. Like yeah. you, I mean, come on. Can't can't compare this. this. It's it's a really good analogy. That is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. They don't care. They stand like they're just standing there, and he saves that girl, and then they all get up and decide, hey, we're just gonna go. So yeah. they go to that place and just start eating. Yeah, they start eating. Right. They, there's food there. But no one. We know. We lay, We learn later why the food's there. Yep. Oh. So yeah. yeah, they're eating it. Of course, you know he's funny. He's standing there talking, and nobody wants to say anything. Yeah, no one wants to talk to him. It's really weird. Like I feel like, are they deaf? What is going on? Like the first time I watched this movie, right? I didn't think it was as good until now. We start talking about it. Yeah, yeah. But here's the neat thing. They all speak English. Yeah, they speak English. I, you know, they, fix that. they fix this in the Time Machine next movie. Oh, in the Guy Pierce one? They don't speak English. No. Oh, that's right. So, t- you know what? I haven't seen it in a long time, right? So maybe we should do that next Thursday. Let's do that now because I have to see it now. It's going to be good. I mean, I mean, there's more things, though, that they did some more things that messed it up, too. Okay, so yeah, so, we'll, we'll talk about it. You know what's really funny? When I watch this movie, right, it makes me want to watch the other one immediately. Yes. Because I wanted to compare. You watch it because it's almost the same movie. Yeah. It changes and and all the special effects improve. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, you know what's really funny? The only scene I remember is Jeremy Irons. Oh, yeah. He was creepy. Yes. I remember Jeremy Irons. I remember the makeup, the way that he talked, the way that he moved, everything. Yeah. 
think because that's the neat thing. This movie's based on the book. Yep. Why the second time machine is based on this movie. Oh. They didn't even look at the book. I gotta get it. I gotta watch it this week. Let's do that next week. Cool. We could do that. Yeah. So he finally gets one of those people to talk because what didn't he say? Hey, who's your? Well, he asked her. Yeah, because she's sitting out there with her, right? Yeah. He asked her what their people are called. It took a while, and then Eloy. Yeah. Then he Eloy. asked her name is uh, Weena. Weena, yes, Weena. And then they go in. He asks, tries to ask her other questions. Is there any old people? No, there's no old. People. I'm surprised they even have names, actually. Yeah, well, I mean, I think naming yourself would be something that they would do since you can talk to each other. Talk. They, they have, have communication. Cows. Yeah. Even cows look at each other. They go, oh, number one seven eight. <laughs> one well, one. You can see about tag on my ear. <laughs> Move. <laughs> oh, we know, they, yeah. I mean, they can, they kind of refrain some stuff, but they're always in a trance like state, and they don't say why, but maybe it's the food they eat. Maybe it's the food they eat, and you know what? They they dress alike. The first time I seen this, right, I thought they were in some kind of a cult. Okay. <laughs> because that's what it is, right? Like, what the heck's going on? Well, no one's talking. All the clothes are provided for them, too. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. The, the clothes are, they just wake up one morning, there's clothes for them, there's food for them. And all they do is just play around, just lay around, get fat, and eat. Yep. And so they're eating. And of course, he's talking to them, and they're like, "You got laws? We don't have any laws." Yeah. You have any yeah. books? Is there any books? Oh, we got books. Anybody's like, "Take me to them." Okay, like, so when he took him to the books, is that his same library from his house? Like, cause I didn't know, like, <laughs> like no. It was, okay. I don't know. In the in the book, he actually finds a library. Okay. He finds uh, things he thinks they're old buildings. He finds certain buildings that he thinks what they are. Okay. But they're missing all apart. Yeah. He, he, goes he, in real detail. he opened the books, right? Like, he got upset about those books. Oh, which who? Come on. Do you see those books that he's touching? Those are like books that cost a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and they just crumble. Yeah. Like, no one take care of it. Here's all the knowledge of man, things that took man a long time. People died. Like, like how do you learn about electricity? How do you know electricity is dangerous? Because somebody touched it and died. Yeah, it died. And they wrote it down so somebody else wouldn't touch it and die. You know, it's that simple. And that's what all the books are. It's all the stuff that we learn so you don't have to go through the trouble. Of finding learning. out yourself, yeah. It's like getting on top of a ladder and going up here and somebody building you another one or a bridge across the deal. So we bridge you a bridge so you can go to the other side and learn something. So mm -hmm. you don't have to wait and spend on building that bridge and die before you get over there and learn something. Right. Know? So basically, that's why he's upset. He's barely mad at them, but those guys don't care. Yeah, they don't. They have no rules. Whatever. So he gets all upset. He's like, I'm going to go back my time. <laughs> of course, Weena chases after him and tells him he can't go outside. Yeah, he can't go outside. He's getting dog. Yes, that's the best part. Like, Whatever. I'm going to go to my machine. And here's, the th here's another thing about old movies that bothers me. Thank God the cameras improved so much. If you, because I don't, I know you don't watch a lot of old movies. No. But most old movies, when it turns dark, it never gets dark in the movie. No. Because can't fit no, they can't shoot it. They had to shoot it in a studio. I watch a lot of old westerns. Yeah. So you can't tell. They're having to shoot out in the dark in a lot of western movies, but you see the sky and the clouds out in the back. Yeah. But they keep telling you it's dark. They have to cover, yeah, it's nighttime. They had to cover the best they can, or they had to shoot this inside a studio. And it's, it, I guess in the black and white, not a big deal, but in the color, you can tell. Yeah. That your lighting is all out and stuff. So, but anyways, <laughs> he goes to, to find the time machine and. It's gone. It's gone because that, that somebody yeah. took it. You the drag march where he got drug into yeah. the deal. Because you got to remember, the time machine set, set in right where his house was. Yes. Which has been destroyed because 100 years. So that you see the drag marks into the deal. And of course, finally, he starts making fire and Weena shows up. Yeah. And then uh, he's like, hey, you want to make a fire? He just throws a stick. You see, he throws a stick at her. <laughs> <I was answering. laughs> I like that. You know what's really funny in that scene? He just, they just really kind of go off camera, like behind the prop, right? And then they just yeah. come back out. I thought it was really weird. <laughs> it was funny. But you know, they're on the sound stage. And so. on the sound stage, it's like, it's like the cameraman didn't even move. Like, okay, they're going to come back out. I'm not going to, we're not going to follow them. They just pop out. You're like, oh, we're off scene. You know, okay, but that's good. Those are the sticks. And there's a lot of them, of course, that's when we see the warlock, the warlock. The warlock, yeah. The first time. Yeah. One grabs her and you know it's going to. Yeah. Grabs her, pulls a bush, he fights it off. He's with like, the, hey, those are With a fire torch, yeah. Yeah, he's like, what are those? And I, I mean, do you understand the why there's Morlocks, right? Yes. Because the people went underground and never Survive came back. Yeah, never came back up, so there's yeah, for so survival. 
Yeah, yeah, because in the book, there's supposed to have been two species. One evolved in the sunlight, and the other one evolved for the conditions below ground. Yes. Oh, I, oh yeah, yeah. And that's the funny thing. These guys are all blue and hairy. They yes. should be white, pasty. Yeah, oh, they should be white. Yeah. That's what I thought, ever, too. Yeah, because, I mean, I don't know if anybody's ever gone down in the caverns. You ever gone to any of the caverns <clears throat> to go underground? Well, I, I used to go to the – I went to the Sonora Caverns and another cavern in San Antonio. You go down there and you see mainly all the slag mites and stuff dark. But the funny thing is, one of them I got to see the fish. They had oh, I went to the San Antonio one because they have bats inside. Yes. Yes. Well, but, well, we didn't go to the same one because the one I went to they didn't have bats. Oh, okay. I think it's Cast Caverns only. Okay. But they, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we went far enough down that they showed a, there was some fish in there. They showed fish. The fish are solid white with no eyes. Whoa. Because they don't need them. They're Almost all right, the bugs you see down there are white too, oh. so everything doesn't because it has no light. So what color does it doesn't need? So it doesn't. It's just reflecting light. Oh wow! So it's neat. So the Morlocks like, should have been white without any eyes, but these ones. Well, they kind of didn't have any eyes, right? Like like they have some kind of white, whatever that yeah, color. These things that glow, so they got kind of got eyes. Yeah. Too. Most likely, if humans stay on the ground a long time, they're probably not going to lose their eyes, but their eyesight will probably change. The eyesight will change. It will probably be yeah, better to see better in night. Because well, yeah. they're nocturnal. Armadillos don't see very well because they only come out at night, too. Oh. But most creatures that come out at night use other senses to do it, and their eyes are just the kind of deal. So, I mean, I yeah. That's so that's why they were afraid of the fire, and not because it can burn, it's because it's bright. Right. And they even try to show this effect, and they... The effect, I guess, made for audiences who are used to seeing this kind of stuff. Yeah. But that, to me, is like, I didn't get it first. And then I was like, oh, that's Oh, cool. this movie's getting better and better by the more we talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's so, getting way better for me. So they take Mina and then he saves her. Yes. But then the next day, Burn. the next day he hangs out with, he's hanging out with her, trying to figure out how he needs to get in the building. Of course, she's saying you can't go in there and get that thing. Yeah. So they're hanging out by the, uh, well... Well, it's, not I like it that she doesn't talk that like I, I like that she doesn't talk that intelligent either. Well, actually, none of them did. Yeah, none of them did. They always have that blank, deer-like stare. Yeah, they're like it's just not like, uh, oh. to me. They look like they're uh, they're drug. Yes, <laughs> they highly look right. like I, I, they don't say it, but I'm thinking the Morlocks may put stuff in there to keep them where they don't fight. Yeah, like they're mundane or they, something. They're not violent people at all. No, they don't fight yet either so he's like oh man he's like hey so why don't what, what do you have and she, she takes him to so like a museum or something yes with that ring he spins that oh. ring and it hears voices and supposedly that's where they got all their english yes they they listened to it yeah they listened to it and played with it that, the language. They basically just played and learned some so it was basically you remember that thing uh spell and speak yes <laughs> Probably nobody else knows what we're talking about because it's like underoos. <laughs> underoos. I didn't know what underoos were. It's something for the eighties. I know. You I know. Speak and spell. You didn't live here in the eighties, though. But I know speak and spell. I know. But well, maybe they did y'all, did y'all have speak and spells? The little red. No. So because I came out in the in the states in eighty nine. Yeah, I came in the states in eighty nine. My cousins had one. I remember okay. what it is too. It's the uh, the red with the yellow trim. And the yeah. buttons have green and blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they had several different models. The yeah, ones they... I remember are all red. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't have, my parents couldn't afford one. Yeah. So I, I, I like, if I, they had one at school, you had to wait your turn. Yeah, to speaking Play stuff. with it. So I only got to play with one maybe twice in my lifetime. Wow. I've seen it one time. On eBay and buy one. <laughs> You know what? Do they still make those speaking spells? Well, I don't think they still make them because they got so many other new things. Internet, you can learn to, to speak on the internet a lot easier now. You know? Oh, yeah. Speaking There's so many spell. programs on the computer. That's so uh, funny. But a speaking spell was pretty awesome for back then because then they oh, have one in TV. You could buy you know? one at 19 for well, 20 bucks with free shipping. Oh, that's I funny. Think about it. I don't know if I need another piece of junk. Speaking speak spell. What? You mean like my Walkman and my awesome floppy disk camera right here? Oh, at least it's not as expensive as a walk, dude. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of smell, what what else is a gym back in these days? <laughs> well, that's cool. So he he learns that. And of course, they go by the the lake. And remember, they had that air raid sign. Yeah, that we heard in the earlier in the movie. And yeah, of course, and they all just get up and walk. 
And they walk towards his, the, the entrance, like, what the heck's going on? Yeah, there's a door open. Finally, the door open with the time machine. And all these people just walk in there. And, a certain, and Wiener goes in there. He tries to grab her, but he misses in the door clicks. Yeah. Then he's up. Man, he's mad now. He's like, all these people just, they just, like, they wake up again. Yeah, and then they just, just walk off. go back to doing their daily activities, like, as yeah, you what were. what did that guy say to him? All clear. Yes, all clear. Yeah, he's like, aren't you going to go in there and get that? Get it? Aren't you going to do anything? And he's yeah. there. He's like, all clear. Yeah. He's like, what? And then, all clear. then he make that connection about the sirens back then. Yeah. And he's like, that's what people used to say all a, a long time ago. Yeah. He goes, it's over. That's all those people are dead. And yeah, basically, that's the funny thing. He said, all those people are dead. Yeah. But apparently, they stayed on the ground and evolved. Wow. So, so he finally, he decides, because somewhere along the line, remember, he saw those vents. Yeah. That's when I guess when she left, we saw those vents for the factories. What were probably factory vents? Yeah, he goes back there and crawls down there. And of course, those Eli's guys are looking at him like, huh? Yeah, it's weird, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, that's weird. They're like, huh? They don't know what to do. Then they're like, well, how would you do that? So these Morlocks are just basically cannibals, yes. Well, yeah, because the Eli's are their cows, Eli's are their meat, yeah. Yep, and so Morlocks is a different they, they feed them, they do everything like a man, like we do on earth now. Yeah, we're cow. We give them food. We go out there, give them food, take care of them, put the shots on them, clean them up, them. and then yeah, yeah we eat them. Them. Except we don't do that. Uh, we just start of chop them in the heads off while we shoot them. Actually, in the no. Here's the funny thing. What? People drive out with their pickups, and you honk the horn, and they come to eat. Oh, that's the train. Oh, and I did not know that. Some farmers got these cows trained enough. They put a they put a trailer because the cows don't want to get on the trailer. Mm. But some people put them on a trailer, either put food in or put them on a trailer and just leave it. And they'll walk on the trailer and walk off. And walk on the trailers off and off. And then you can come out there eventually and walk out there, honk your horn, and they'll get on the trailer. You close the door and take them to the slaughterhouse. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> they're cows. Yeah. Dude, this movie's, they're like sheep. This movie is way ahead of its time. Yeah, it's like sheep. You get a goat. Yeah. You put a goat with a sheep, and then they'll do whatever the goat does. I wish and they the could goat will walk on a the trailer. They'll walk on the trailer. The goat walks off the trailer, oh. and then you lock the sheep up. Wow! You know what? I wish they make an updated version of this time machine with modern time ideals. They could. Oh, somebody to do it. I don't know if they'll ever touch it again. Yeah, this is really good. This was made by MGM, I think. Yeah. Yes, in MGM. So this wow. is pretty good. I mean, the book is pretty good too. Now I gotta get the audio book. You know what? It's probably on YouTube somewhere. I could probably listen to it. It's not a very long. It is not a very long book. Yeah, I don't think it is. Very short book. But so 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 he crawls down there and he finds well he sneaks around. He sees all the machinery. Yeah, all the machinery. And that's what they run. But they have light inside. Okay, right? actually, this is where we go back to. It's supposed to be dark. It's supposed to be dark. Yeah. I, I didn't, we don't figure that oh, out until the scene. No, Remember it is dark. It's just lighting, so that way we can see what's going on. Yeah, so you can yeah. see what's going on because they couldn't do that. Because yeah. we see that we'll find out it's dark. I think it's kind of dim where they can see. Each other. Yeah, it's dim, it's yeah. Dim. So he goes around and finally finds Wina, and they, they're using those whips. Well, he runs in that room, remember? <sighs> yeah, and they whip them into the room. Yes. The next movie looks better. But anyway, oh, yeah. we realize he's eating them. They're eating them. Yeah, they're eating them. Yeah, I realize that too. Run those people in there, and he gets that whip, and he starts fighting the the. the well, robots. the scene that we realize they're eating them, right? Like, I like how the bones are super white, like they're super clean. You know, yeah, like. So clean. <laughs> they can sit there and they lick those, but they lick the whole skeleton because it's the whole skeleton. There's the whole skeleton. It's like, I guess. It's kind of like if me and you eat chicken, right? And then the chicken looks exactly how it looks instead of really us breaking it apart. And stuff like, you know, it's not going to look like that. But I think a lot of it has to do with, I mean, when they did the special effects, they probably got the skeleton from medical facilities. Yeah. And didn't want to break the bones on because they the skeleton return. cost a lot. Yeah, they cost a lot. So. They got like, I don't know how much they, I know nowadays they, there's several thousands. Yeah, it's not, it's not cheap. So I'm bet back then they're like, uh, just set them out. We're gonna take them back to the the medical place. Yep. We're just following them for a few days. Okay. Remember, movies weren't allowed budgets like they are now. No, nothing like that. They had to find the cheapest way. Yeah. English, low budget English movie. Because yeah. uh, the guy, the main actor, I don't know that much about him, but I know he appeared in a movie called The Birds. Oh yeah, he's in The Birds. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he's Rod not, Taylor. He is still to this day terrified of that movie. Yeah. Yeah, you said that before, like your mother, yeah. Yeah, so I'm thinking, I need to see the birds. 
but I'm sure it's not very true. But I think if we see it right now, it might look lame. But back then, like, they see like nothing like the, that. It's going to be like watching The Exorcist now. It's just laughable. Yeah, it's very laughable. Like, I remember when was people, the last time you saw something that was way out of your mind? Like, Tron. When we saw yeah. Tron the first time, I was like, whoa. I can't believe yeah, special it, effects went that like, far. It's like, it's like Howard the Duck for me. Oh, this is awesome. Man, watch it now. It's, oh, God. Yeah, it's, it's so lame. If they put a midget in a costume. I'm like, <laughs> maybe I didn't really, it's like, did I really watch this movie or did I just dream I watched this movie? Because it's not that good. I don't know. But, so he goes down there and he starts fighting him. He gets a whip and then he gets builds a torch. Yeah, he builds a torch. Of course, I like it. Ween is with, and then this other Eli is following him around too. Yeah, the guy who answered him, like, that was the only other dude that yeah. had a speaking part. It's funny, but th we, this is when I realized it's the dark because remember he lights a match and you see that they try to use the special effect to make it look like your eyes. You know, yeah. when you come out of a dark room and you see it for the first time. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was the effect. So that's when you know it was supposed to be dark. So yes. I'm thinking audiences for that time would have known that. Yes. They would have never been, they would have never questioned it like we do. No, because we never used like, to seeing oh, something I've like seen that. in a thousand movies. Yeah. But yeah, he's flashing and they can't see. They're not scared of the fire. They they're scared of the yeah, the light. They can't see. Finally, he beats up and then he gets. He starts to get beat. Remember? Yeah. And then the Eloy jumps in and helps him. Yeah. So they finally get the idea that they gotta fight back. They got. They can fight back. They've never been yeah. exposed to that before. Yeah, they never, exactly. They've never seen anybody rise up against the Morlock. Yeah. They just they yeah, were just one told Morlock. what to do. Yeah, he kills one Morlock and starts killing the other Morlocks. And then they, he gets them all and they escape and go out the tunnel. Yeah, they, they say, go to the stairs. Dude, they built stairs here. <laughs> yeah, they got stairs. Well, the more, they would have been that. If you got machinery, you'd be yeah. stairs. There. I thought it was really advanced for the Morlocks for machinery. Like, I didn't know what the machines do, you know? Yeah, they, well, we forgot the Morlocks are the smart. Yeah, the advanced one, the uh, the older people. Yeah, yes. they're the, the people living on the ground. They're the workers. It's mm -hmm. supposed to be like all the rich people got to live up top, like you see them. All the rich people live mm -hmm. on the top. And all the workers live on the bottom. On the bottom. And the workers are feeding on the, the rich people. Wow. But that, but that's supposed to be punishment for the people that live on the top. Yeah, it's punishment. Yep. It's the uh, backwards effect. Right? Living the, the, the great life and ignoring all the people at the bottom. Yeah. All the poor people. And because they never question it. They never question like, oh, where do we go? Where does life take us? Nothing. There's no intelligence. Yeah, there's no intelligence. They have no questions. They're there. They're, there's no future for these people. Yep. They travel all the way to the future. Remember, he even says, hey, I want to know about you, so I can go back and tell people my time. But he got there and realized they're at the future, and there's no future for mankind. No. Well, yeah. I, I guess in a way, if you look at Eloy's mankind, that's not. But you look at Mur Murloc's mankind, that's different. Yeah, well, as long as I keep raising those people and don't lose them. Yeah. They'll be okay. Because there's nothing, apparently there's nothing else to eat. And this way, funny, is like they went so far in the future, right? There's no iPads here. <laughs> <laughs> there was they're in those museums probably fell apart already uh, oh they probably yeah the, the, because uh, H.G. Wells ideas is humanity destroys itself so that's no yeah. from technology yeah, all the weapon stuff but the thing is all the technology like the way our world works what what is Apple up to the iPhone what? 12 I haven't been following well nobody keeps the old ones everybody throws those away yeah that's why you won't ever find one no because people throw it away and get to the next one, and they're like, Ooh, "This is not going fast enough." I'm like, "Dude, I can't afford that. That is awesome. I still got <laughs> iPhone three. <laughs> and let me tell you, that's a good piece of equipment. Because I can't believe you're still using the iPhone three G. Well, Probably three GS. At the end of the year, I got to switch. You do? Because none of this, nothing will support uh, support it after the <gasps> next year. Wow. And I'm like, what am I gonna do? That was such a good piece of technology. It didn't cost me a dime. <laughs> I have to be like everybody else now. When did I give that to you? When the iPhone 4 come out? When did the yeah, iPhone yeah. 4 come out, right? You gave it me years, years ago. Yeah, okay. years and years ago. I don't throw away stuff, okay? Shoot. You, you talking about I don't, you don't throw away stuff? Check this out, man. Oh. I'm showing you my iPhone. I guess this is the, the, the other 3G. iPhone oh, 3G. Okay. This is the iPhone 4 or the 5. Okay. No, this is the you 5. the original one we had. Oh, I still have the original one. Oh, you gotta keep that. The the, the, the very first iPhone? Yes, the very I have first that. iPhone. Shoot, I can't find it now. Okay, because remember I used it at one time. Yeah. Oh, I, it's right here. This is an awesome. Yeah, the first that's iPhone. Beautiful. I mean, that's beautiful. That's what happens when you make a really good device. Yeah, iPhone. 
So these are the I've Moon collection. Yeah, one day you can have your museum. <laughs> well, just up to the iPhone 5 and that's it. That's okay, I'll own you a couple of my phones. <laughs> just a couple of Sony phones in there. I mean, I'm not a big into Samsung. Hey, it's okay. <coughs> really like Samsung anyway. Yeah, well, you know. They'll probably take over the world anyway. You'll so, probably get Samsung everywhere. So at the end of this movie, right, like, he destroyed the, you know, he, he beat up the warlock. It's very yeah. James Bondish, I guess, into me. Yeah. Well, they throw all the firewood down in there, and they, they blow up the gill and yeah, all they those... blow up all the things, and they, they use a little uh, model again, I can tell. You know, kind of like the lava yeah. scene from the exactly. 60s, yeah. I but appreciate yeah, it a lot. They do a lot of models. Models, I love models. So yeah. That's the thing. Like, they that's blew up... That's I mean, something that's going away. It looks really good. They took their time to, you know, shoot that stuff. Kind of like uh, Star Wars. Star Wars is the same thing with the uh, yeah, end of the, the movie. Model. Yep. And it's amazing. The only thing I... You see, sometimes it's the off coloring. Oh, the off coloring. Yeah, I noticed that too. That's the only thing they really needed to work on back then is try to figure out how to fix the coloring. You know what's really funny? Like, let's just say we do this present day, right? The coloring will be fixed in post production on the uh, editing software. Then you can you know, match it easily. It's now, but I mean, of course, they're using film, so you can't do too much too. No, film. you can't. And you know, that's what's you know, what's really funny. would film, he would film, film, you know? Yeah. He'd run the film storms it, and then each one to have an element on it. Yes. To make it one film. I know. It's amazing. It just, really. it just you have to work with what you got back then. Yeah, and I mean, there's a lot of trickery. Yeah. A lot. Of, you gotta. You almost had to be a magician. You know, talk yeah. about film, right? I, you know, a lot of times we forget, like you know, the film camera is allowed and it doesn't pick up sound. So I found, I was, you know, I'm backing up some old stuff of mine, right? And um, I found one of my aunt's movies, like she got married in Hong Kong, right? And they shot yeah. it with film. So I was watching it because I, I backed up to YouTube so I have a copy of it and I can show it to my aunt. And I was showing it to my son, Ethan, right? And he's like, how come there's no sound in this video? I explained to him, you know, back then, they film a film, there's no sound. You have to record that yeah. separately. Yeah, you're right. Because remember, they used uh, the Super 8s, I know, they had like a little tape recorder that went with it and you had to use your tape. And most people didn't. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, my parents never had one. My grandparents had a Super 8 and I got that. Yeah. And of course, all the old films, they have, you know, there's no sound. But uh -huh. I know I found advertisements where you buy the little recorder and you film and you tape it. And then I mean, try to play it. I don't know how they did it from the 60s, right? But a lot of times, like, they do the audio after they do the film. Yeah, they probably did that all the time. <coughs> yeah. That's why you have the clapboard, too. Yeah, it's to sync up the thing. Synchronize the sounds. Yep. The, the, but that's, I mean, it's just times change so much. You don't I have to know. do all that. You can do it all at one. You can use an iPhone to make a movie. Yes, you can make a pretty decent yeah. movie with an iPhone. That's crazy. So anybody's griping about their iPhone, you're an idiot. <laughs> oh, so let's talk about the, uh, the end of this movie. I liked it a lot because um, when he go back and he tells uh, the yeah, guys. Well, finish, up, finish it up because remember, he gets everybody, they burn it down, and then they yes. open the doors again. Yes, to grab his time machine. time machine. But it turns out it's a trap. Yes. Gets in there and he has to fight him, and they almost tore him up because you said, Remember, he came in, yep, all torn, all torn up. up. So he falls in his machine and he accidentally hit it, yes, which is an important scene in a way because it comes back in the next movie. They fixed, they redid it. Oh, later. okay, so but he, he goes he, backwards. He went, no, he went forward in time first, remember? Oh, yeah, why they all died, yeah, yes. why they all die, yeah. And then, so he goes back. So, in reality, when he goes back, he should have made an alternate reality. Yeah, see, so the time he left, Wiener and all them died. Yeah. He never came back. He never they came back, back, yeah. Yeah, they should, like, yeah, <laughs> the Eloy should have starved to death about the Morlocks. Exactly, exactly, because he wasn't there. So in, in a way, he destroyed humanity. Yep, he wiped out everything on Earth when he went forward. So he was the protagonist and the antagonist. Exactly, but not in this movie because they don't know about alternate realities or no paradox. it's just because in, in yeah in this movie he seems like the hero but then no one ever thought past like what happened to the heroes now they, what exactly. they gonna, eventually nice. they run out of food yeah they starve to death there's no way to take care of them yeah but yeah and he reverses and he goes all the way back he went back to home yes and then he makes it a week later yeah a week later new year's well, yeah you know because he didn't he could have came back right after he left but he doesn't he comes back a week later to match up the time. The yard. Yeah, his time machine's out in the yard. Yeah. So he has to walk through the uh, laboratory. And yes. Go, and he pops in 
while all these people are standing there eating. And of course, he's got one guy whose house is a drunk. I think that because he's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> he just keeps drinking. That's all he wants to do is eat and drink. But yeah, and then he tells his story to him. Yep, he tells a story to them, and they like, and they don't believe it. They don't believe him, like except it. for Philby. Yeah, Philby's kind of on the fence. Yeah, but I like it because he reaches in his pocket and he pulls up a, a plant, a flower that. Oh yeah, he, during that time, yes. Yeah, during that time, and of course Philby's like, well, he doesn't have anything that I like it because he doesn't actually just go. This is oh, I never seen anything. So this got to be a, from a different world. It's what he says later because he sees a plant. Never seen anything like this. Yeah, basically. he's a botanist. Yeah, well, he's interested, in but he does. He just says that. But he's to him, a lot of those people are like, well, they could have found it some foreign place. But the, the neat thing is, when they go outside, it's cold. Yeah, fly back again. He goes, you know, I don't know if, where he got the flyer, but he goes, there's no way he could have got the flyer during winter. Yeah. So and you know, it's really funny that I, I thought of a weird twist when he got the flower. What happens if he bring that flower? Right? It's not like a is a new plant to this species is just a six out of a species and then they all die from it yeah well you never know why yeah it takes over the whole countryside <laughs> yeah, they, they die from this mutation but you plant. got that it would have been a plant that would have been able to take a lot of different things now but yes since and now when they bring it back right now this this pollen releases and yeah. then it kills everybody there yep yeah. there's a whole nother movie right there <laughs> that's funny going all the way back to this time yeah because he wasn't really there, he was in the future. He made an alternate timeline again. Yes, I know the alternate time. I know. Well, at the end of the movie, he actually trying to go back forward to, I guess, go back to Weavy, right? Yeah, he goes. Well, yeah. And for this movie, I'm sure he jumped in the machine, went back to the floor to see Weena again. Yeah, Weena. And took all the Eloys how to live. Yeah. Because the because the so, audience doesn't know about alternate timelines. No. So as far as they're concerned, is one. They're waiting for him. Yeah, there's one timeline, and there those people are off the front, and they need somebody to come feed them. Yeah, to be like, their leader, to show them. Uh, yeah. yeah. So he actually went went back, or he went back to the or go to the future to save humanity. But the neat thing in the book, he jumps in the time machine and disappears, and they never see him again. But well, which is kind of like they this think one. he goes backwards in time the oh. next time. But, really? Yeah. Because they say, oh, they never see him again. They think he got killed. Because there's no really reason for him to go forward because he already saw that there's nothing in the future. Oh, so he but went back. thing about this movie, I like this this one question. When he talks to the, the housekeeper, he's like, did he take anything with him? He goes, only three. Oh, books. three books, yes. I wonder what... Did yeah, he didn't say no, what the like, books were. Well, that's the thing. That's the, the biggest thing is for the audience to decide. Yeah. Remember, because he kind of goes... She goes, I don't know. He goes, what books, three books do you take? She goes, I don't know. And he goes, well, what three books would you take? Oh. That's That question is actually for the audience. Yeah. So everybody sitting in the theater. Because remember, this is the only place you ever watch this movie is in the theater. You're not going to see this on TV, really. No. It'll be a while. So the audience members, because a lot of movies were like that. A lot of movies, they were sci-fi or horror, yeah. ended with a question aimed at the audience. Oh, I didn't know that. They make their own decision. That's how you like monsters. You didn't always see monsters on the screen. You had to make the monster yourself because you're always going to make a better monster in your head than what you'll see on screen at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's, yeah, you can so never yeah, bring out your true vision. I mean, I watch all these old horror movies and stuff. They always end and almost give you a question at the end to ponder when you leave the theater. I like that. So I guess back in this time, a lot of people was like the Bible. I don't know. Yeah. Well, what would you, actually, I wouldn't take, I mean, what would you take? From this time or right now? Yeah, right now. Well, I mean, right now or then, it doesn't matter. You're going to take the same, same three books because you're going to the same point in time. Oh, I have to think about this. Me, I'm going to take a book on, I would take a book on house building structures, you know, because I got a book on all the structures throughout time. I'd take that book. I'm going to take a book on probably uh, oh, electronics. Okay. And then I'm probably going to take a book on, like, uh, survival, oh. water filtration. You know what? I, I, you know, from what you just said, those three books, right? I didn't think about it. I didn't think about taking books on survival because now, like, hey, um, George went to see the future, right? It looks yeah. like they don't have any of these skills. They don't have anything. Sorry. That's like, so, I, I won't be able to teach it, but if I have these books, I would be. Oh. Yeah, you, you can take those three books and build your own time. I mean, why do you, I don't want to take... I mean, if you take the Bible, then you're going to become a preacher, and yeah. you're going to make these people yeah. live by this story. You're I mean, going to gonna you're going to transfer that. the Eloys to almost exactly the same people. Yeah, I'm going to make them a different people. You get a chance oh. again. 
distance. Why take any of your civic books? You don't I, take your law books. Okay. Now you're gonna build your own laws. You're gonna you, build everything. You went to the really righteous path. So you, you ask me, right? Let me tell you about my dog secrets first. Okay. I'm gonna. T- <laughs> I probably won't take any books back. <laughs> I'm gonna govern these people the way I want them to act. Like, so I'm gonna bring since I'm a Chinese person, right? I'm gonna bring communism over there. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, hey, 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 I'm a 41, right? Hey, everybody's in their 20s, right? First, we're gonna do, I'm gonna have my first orgy. <laughs> we're just, I'm the only guy. Then I'll figure out the rest of the stuff later. <laughs> well, these poor people are, the future is doomed. <laughs> the future is doomed. You do not want me, but like, in reality, right? Like, I, like well, hey, you know what the nice thing is? You already taught them how to topple a tyrant, so good yeah. luck. See, that's the thing. Like, you're gonna die in your sleep. <laughs> they might have to listen to me because they don't know yet any better yet, right? They just yeah. only know that. Like, but then, like, I, I agree with you. We need to build, um, take books on how to build new things, how to uh, survive, and like, you know, instinct skills like that. Yeah, I mean, a history book would not do you any good. No, a civic book wouldn't do you any good because, in laws, they can, you can develop all that on a deal, right. but you've got to, if you're gonna build a civilization. You might want something to, to stand on. For that. Because now we destroyed, we destroyed their civilization. They, they, they yeah. destroyed their provider. Now it's they got to learn. Like it's like that man with the fish, right? Now you got to teach the people how to fish. Exactly. Exactly. That's a good point. Right wow. That's a really good discussion a question. Well, this was a good. This was one of those movies that was so basic. You had to. You have to discuss it. Yeah. Because you know some movies are so complex. It's already discussed and decided for you before you leave the theater. Yeah, you just want to be this entertained. This is a movie when they're walking out of the theater. They have a discussion. Okay, remember, a lot of people go to a movie and then to, on a date, they go movie and then eat. Well, this is something you'd sit there and talk about. So. Yeah, because, you know, most movies sit there and go, it was so cool when Spider-Man blew up that deal yeah. and stuff. Now, this one, you're going to ask them a question. What three books would you take? Yeah. You know what's really funny, Shane, that you, you remind me of? It's kind of like when I wrote my Pleasant Dreams movie. My Pleasant Dreams movie is supposed to make you question what would you do? Exactly. They should. Why shouldn't they pose a question? Yeah, but then I mean, we had to change it because, you know. I think a lot more movies pose questions than we realize, but I think because of the all the stuff, special effects and yeah. stuff, the question gets lost somewhere. It does. But you just remember movies, all the other stuff. Uh, it, there are movies that are open, uh, opened and closed before the movie even ends. Yeah. Wow, what three books would you take? I'm going to name this episode this. What three books would you take? I'm going to write this down right now. That's so good. Yeah, this is actually a pretty good movie if you want to jump in. No, it that. is. And I'd say it's one of the better older movies that I have seen. No, I, I don't think so. Right? I mean, like, I haven't seen too much. Yeah. Well, can you compare it to anything else you've seen in the 1960s? Well, I'm about to. If we ever watch Batman. <laughs> well, that's 1966. But yeah, it's the sixties. By the but yeah, but see the things have changed. Movies actually changed quite a bit in the sixties. Yeah, because nineteen sixties are so close to the fifties. Halfway in in the sixties, things have really changed. You almost can't tell you're in the same decade. Wow. I don't know why, but I mean I have begun in the sixties. But it's almost like from sixties to like sixty three or sixty five, the world is different. It's almost more like nineteen fifties. From from the middle, it's almost more like towards the seventies. People changed quite a bit in the 60s. You know what? I've seen... People uh, were very civil at the beginning of the 60s, and then there was all them about protest marches. Oh, right. I don't know if it has a lot to do with Vietnam War, well, politics, the maybe, president if, being if assassinated. It has not a lot, but it has a big impact on it. Yeah, the president's being assassinated. We landed on the moon at the end of it. So how many old movies have you seen? Way, at the beginning of the 60s, no one would believe you would land on the moon. Oh the yeah, the 50s, we landed on the moon. Yeah, no, I highly agree. I still to this day I can't believe we landed on the moon. No. Bar- by the stories I hear, barely. Yeah, see, so but we barely landed on the moon, right? And then now let's just say, okay, I believe we landed on the moon. Now my next question is, how come we haven't gone back? Can you imagine when Christopher Columbus like, hey, I found new land, and like, okay, awesome, yeah. and then we never gone back. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is, when he got to the new land, you could actually live on the new land. When we got out there, you oh, can't. Yeah, you just like oh. yeah. Why would he? Why would he take the chance to go the possibility of dying? Yeah, because I mean, I mean, he could have lived and he could have built. A, you could get off on the land and build a shelter, and he found people there that could build a shelter. 
When you get on the moon, you can't live in that capsule. No. You're dead. You're you won't live yeah, you're there. right. I've seen the Martian, so yes. Yeah. I mean, Mars, you have a better, you probably have a better chance right. of Mars oh. than you do on the moon. So before I forget, so what are the old movies, right, that pose questions like this? Because I got to see more of this stuff now. I don't know. We'll have to just, we'll have to run across them. I don't know all of them. Yeah, because, like, you know what? Now, you're right. The ending is not as important as the question that was posed. But like I said, I didn't, I've never seen that many sci-fi from the 60s. Maybe I've seen more, uh, horror movies. Because horror but, movies but, is always easier to make. Yes, extremely easy. S to this day, horror movies is still easy to make. It's still easy, because you just got to help suspend uh, re well, disbelief. I mean, like... I mean, the popcorn movie. Go in there. It's good. Yeah. And then some are way better than others. I mean, like... The other drama will be drama is easy to make. Like it's not like it's, it's easy for us to make a sci-fi movie, even though we made a sci-fi movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did. Well, it's easier nowadays to do sci-fi than it was. Yeah, today, yeah. If you yeah, have one, it was a sci-fi movie, and they didn't. They, they people didn't really want to spend on sci-fi movies. No. This is why this movie just kind of, it just stands out. It's kind of by itself. Yeah. Because you don't start getting more sci-fi until. Until, uh, well, you get Star Trek, the Invaders on TV. But for movies, most of your sci fi movies don't start popping up until after uh, Star Wars comes yeah. out. Yeah, oh, and, and you know, Alien. And everybody can do this now. Yeah. And everybody tries. Oh, that's why it's why, the, why Lucas got so rich because no one believed yeah. in sci fi. Cause... Nobody believed that was it. He didn't have any competition. No. He built his own competition. Yeah, Lucas. He did. <laughs> Because, I mean, they wouldn't even give him money. He had a film. They gave him some, uh, Fox gave him some money. Yep. He showed him what he had, showed paintings. This is what I'm going to paint like. They're like, all right, well, I'll take a risk on you. But we're only going to give you a, a half of what we prompt, what you need. Yeah. Film it. We like it. You get the rest. Wow. So that's what happened. And then the other mistake is like, oh, yeah, you can have the rights to all your characters. Well, <laughs> that was the, the beginning because. There was no, you didn't make toys for anything. No. There was, I mean, there was some TV series that had some toys, but you didn't market on toys yet. No, you didn't market on toys. 80s. When the 80s comes along, they make toys and then they make a movie. Yeah. Yeah, then a cartoon. Transformers, then a cartoon. Yeah. GoBots, trans. you know, which, by the way, nobody watches GoBots anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Mask. I like GoBots. I actually like GoBots. I really like GoBots, Go man. Wow. Okay, so you know what? Let's do it next Thursday. The, the, the time machine from, was it 2002? What year did I that? I can't remember what year it is, but yeah. We know which, I know which one you're talking about. This is only one other one. Yeah, there's only one other one, right? Guy Pierce. What year did that come out? 2002, I was right. All right. Did you travel through time to fight? <laughs> Actually. I know it, you got a time machine in there. I just can't see it. Yeah. Hold on. Oh, I forgot Orlando Jones was in this movie. Yes. Well, he plays the, he the plays hologram thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah, he plays the, well, he plays the librarian. The librarian. Ooh, which is a very important deal because this character actually knows. Yeah. So let's do it. And then, you don't know, we, you don't know what we're going to do next Monday yet, but we're going to do time travel. I mean, a time machine for next Thursday. So I'm going to end this right here. Thank you for watching this segment of our review. I hope you had a great time listening to us. Be sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you on the next one. Laters.